got a lot of really great stuff coming up, especially an interview with one of my favorite guys who has my favorite nickname for me. Yeah, Lack of Speed. Let's check out an interview with Jason Line. have an opportunity here that rarely ever happens in my lifetime. I get to work with a genuine racer, a bona fide racer. This guy has started from grassroots, stock, super stock, and gone to the highest of pro stock. What I would like to do is, Jason, I'd like you for you just give me a quick synopsis. Yeah, I actually started bracket racing when I was young. I thought I was pretty good at it. Probably wasn't as good as I thought, but uh, kind of evolved into stock eliminator with the, the influence of some friends, some of my dad's friends. and. Uh, yeah, it's just sort of a good hobby that uh, got out of hand, really. So, but it's been uh, been fun, fun ride, of course, and uh, racing's been good to uh, to me and my family. Well, we're in your my business room. I would say You're, this is where you have made your success by collecting data, understanding dyno, and uh, just beating on things to find ways to make more reliable horsepower. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right, but now all of a sudden, I think we're on a new venture for you. I think you on to the next level well trying to for sure you know trying to make uh, make these engine blocks which has been a favorite saying on that is uh, every university costs money this one's no exception I stole that from Bob Fox and it's been a very hard hard process we're uh, still learning constantly learning and it's evolving and uh, it's been fun to say it's been a challenge would be an understatement <laughs> well you know the old saying uh, the only constant in life is change racing is that is it in a nutshell yep. what we did yesterday is a memory Yep. Now, maybe we learn something. Sure. Sometimes we learn what not to do more than what to do. Yeah. Uh, that generally has a whole bunch of parts involved and are not <laughs> right. original state. Yeah, they changed uh, the way they look for sure. Yep. Yeah, so the power making that we've done now, that's really the big change. And the key, though, is keep that power contained. In other words, making parts break is not the goal. Making power that's going to generate energy that's your goal, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, you want to make something better. I mean, I don't care what you're making. You're making widgets, right? If you uh, you make a widget, you want to make the best widget. If you look at every single part of the race engine, right, every single piece of it is better than it was 10 years ago and 20 years ago and 30 years ago. And they say, well, why don't we just make it right the first time? Well, it's not possible. The, you know, the environment changes and the needs change. You know, it has to evolve. There's just no quick road to do that. You can kind of speed the process up by, by having more, better people and test things faster. But, but it's still, um, you know, technology changes at a certain rate. And uh, not all of it's the same rate, so you got to grow with it. Well, learning, uh, you exchange time or money for wisdom. Fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. So, uh, and the cost is always... Uh, that's the part that hurts. Yeah, you know? painful. Uh, yep. bit, and sometimes real painful. Yeah. You know? But that's not our goal. Our goal is to make sustainable horsepower, reliable horsepower. Yep. Well, this new engine combination, I mean, that seems to me in discussion previously, that seems to be your total focus of making something that can work. I had a hard time getting engine blocks, so I said, well, We'll just, we'll just make our own, which again, is a, it's, a, it's a romantic idea. I'm not sure it's always a great one. but So not just make one, but let's make it better as long as we're making it. So right. both my partner and I were both naive going into this. I don't know, maybe thinking we knew, knew exactly how we were going to do it. We also, I was very naive in thinking that, you know, everybody's thought process on how to build the engine was like mine. Well, <laughs> obviously there's a lot of different ways to, to, to skin the cat. And, uh, you know, it's not that anybody's right or wrong. There's just different ways of doing it and, you know, for their particular needs. The good thing is, you know, we're small. We can uh, try to adapt, you know, quicker. Uh, yes, and, challenging. But very, very challenging, yeah. But we're going to make it better. We're going to make it the best, you know. I mean, the goal is to not to, you know, not to sell the same thing everybody else has, but, but sell something that's, you know, a, a level up. And, uh, you know, and saying it is one thing, doing it's another. It can't just be fluff. There's got to be, you know, real, real substance behind it. So that's that's what we've really put our effort into in trying to make that. And uh, you know, the truth is, we don't, we don't. Know. There's a lot of things we don't know, but we're we're learning. We're going to figure it out. Well, I, I can say this: someone who has absolutely no background, let's say less background than you have, uh, that's Russian roulette. Yeah. Right. Uh, you've tenured yourself in the industry, and you've learned and exchanged a lot of time. You've seen things work, not work. 
but you're also in a, an era of engine building that used to be, we were mostly an entry of uh, normal aspirated motors. Yep. Now we did have some blown applications, they're blown yep. alcohol, top fuel, so forth. That's, those are a little bit different deals where, where you play, but your engine does have the chameleon ability, ability to be normal uh, aspirated or yep. in this case, you're looking at boosted. Yeah, that's the plan. And again, uh, with the help of some, some friends and customers that build different types of engines, you know, they're helping to push us forward to make sure that we're making it better for everybody's application. You know, if somebody wants to make, you know, 2,500 or 3,000 horses one of these, we've got to make sure that it, that it does have the ability to do that and to be structurally sound. So. Well, that is one big challenge, but I it, just got to tell you, uh, you, you have grabbed that tiger by the tail. Yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a challenge, and uh, but you know, it's, it's also a doable one, so yeah, there you yeah go. it's very doable. Can you talk about a couple of key points you think that's a little unique, or you know, how much do you want to keep this under your hat? As you and I talked before, uh, and I say this with everybody, I didn't want to come out with everything until, until we're really ready, because the worst thing you can do is say, Oh yeah, we're gonna sell these engine blocks. Okay, I'll take one. Well, I don't have any, and I've already done that with a couple of people. Of course, they're friends of mine, you know, so they're they're understanding. But we've sort of weeded things out, you know, one one's twosy at a time. We can't produce, uh, you know, super high quantities of them. You know, we're trying to make something that's actually better, so uh, nicer. Uh, we probably won't be for everybody. Obviously, the, you know, financially, uh, they're going to be a little a little pricier. But the block will be uh, will be a little nicer than uh, than what's out there. Well, you know, one of the things about racing over all the years I've been associated with, sometimes we put price in, in front of um, yeah. quality. And in the old days, uh, that was bad, and today it's still the same. I still, just got still, still bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah but everybody's on a different uh, level financially. Not everybody can afford to have something. And I, I've been on all sides of it, like where you bought what you could afford to buy. And, um, and that's the same thing, you know. Uh, obviously, we're looking to, um, again, make the best thing out there, so it's not going to be the cheapest. Well, the ultimate, from my perspective, is if you make good, reliable horsepower, then you have a better opportunity to win. Yeah. Uh, blowing it up every time and, no. uh, you know, maybe win. Yeah, you're not, sa you're not, you're not saving money. No. <laughs> you no. know, unfortunately, Danny Jessel, he, he, he pounded this into my head, and he's 100% right, you know. Don't, don't try to save me money, because every time you try to save me money, it costs me money. So, uh, and it's very true, be, because, uh, you know, when I take the cheap route out, uh, you know, I end up, it ends up cost me time and a half again, because I end up having to not only, I wasn't happy with the first one I bought, I had to buy the second one, the, the right one, the second time. Well, it costs a lot more money, so, but, but again, everybody's at different spots, and, and I get that, we can't cater to everybody, but, uh, you know, we're trying to... Um, trying to uh, make the best thing that we can possibly make. Well, it also sounds like your future looking in your design. In other words, you know what, you know what the horsepower we made a decade ago, five years ago, a year ago, none of it's gone down. No. Everything's gone. No, you know, 30 years ago, you know, if somebody had an engine that made a thousand horsepower, that was like, you know, insane. Well, now, like, you know, that's like beyond commonplace. It's like everywhere, right? So. Uh, yeah, things change, and you got to change with it. And surrounded by the right folks who um, are, you know, forward forward thinking. That's what you got to do. Well, you know, one thing that I've admired about what you've accomplished is that your design and everything you're working for is still linked to your knowledge and the working relationship. That this is a system, and that is, I can make this and buy some really good parts, but they have to work in harmony. They have to be in design efficiency. But the tuner, that's you. You're one of the guys that have a history of being one of the best. Uh, so you understand how uh, bad tuning can cause you a lot of problems. Yeah, there's no question. I, you know, I don't know. If, you know, people like to put people on a pedestal, and you know, I, I don't like to put myself up there because I don't know that I can live up to those standards. But, yeah. but, but you know, you do the best you can. But you got to, you know, look at the pieces, parts afterwards. They're all telling you a story, of course. You know, and again, you know, going back to the block, you know, you don't want to build your house on a pair of twigs, right? Like you got to have a good foundation. So it all starts with that. But. But the tuning side of it, yeah, it's it's a huge deal. You know, a, a happy engine is going to stay together for uh, way longer, and certainly in the, you know a bracket race type that application, you know, the better it's tuned up, uh, you know, the the steadier it's going to run, and the better it's going to follow the air. Well, see, that's where I think your background lends itself to understanding what the box is going to go through. You've sort of learned the weak parts. You've learned the areas that uh, you need to strengthen or redirect you know, sure. oil 
Yep. For instance, uh, the last time I checked, most of the objects that we have moving require oil. Yes, but, sir. Rather consistently. Yeah, well, not only that, but I, I have good feedback from, from other folks. I mean, I know a lot of good good folks in our industry who um, have a lot of good ideas. And so I try to you know tap into that because the more experience, the more you can listen to other people. Um, again, you should be able to make a better product that that fits everybody's needs uh, in the end. So, uh, again, that, that going into it, I... <laughs> I sort of made the assumption everybody built the engine the, the way I wanted to build it. And that is not the case. And uh, there's a lot of good ideas out there. And again, tailoring it to, to the, a specific need is still key. So the block has to have enough um, built-in tools to be able to do all those things. Well, you, I'll be redundant here and simply saying, you, like anything that's being built, it's based on a good foundation. Yep. This is where you have targeted. For right? sure. You know, there's a lot of other areas. In other words, there's one thing to make power. And yeah. there's a lot of really smart people in the industry. We know how to make power. The question is, can you make reliable power? Yeah. And within that reliability, that gives you the opportunity to now go to the next level. Yeah. But if you break parts, you know, just because of lack of knowledge or whatever, uh, that's the wrong, or the wrong trip. It's a, it's a road backwards, right? It is. That's where your experience checks in. I think this is what's going to be a key catalyst to the the... Uh, quality of your product. I think this is where the industry is. It needs it, and I'm not disrespecting anybody that's doing this. I'm just simply saying you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Yeah. And so I think you're. You've already convinced me of your your passion to get this right. Uh, that's one of the things that will add a tremendous value to your product. I think you got a home run headed your way. Well, I hope so. It, you know, we got the easy part done. We talked about it. You know, <laughs> so. so. Actually doing it is the hard part, but we're, we're getting there. We're making progress for sure. We're trying to look at all, you know, everything, not just the design, but the metallurgy, all these things. And of course, you know, I'm not an expert in any of those areas, but uh, but I've tried to make a point to know an expert in all those areas. Yes. And so, you know, if we can put all the pieces of the puzzle together, which we have, it's a fun part of racing. If you if you stand still, if you don't try to get better, you're going to get run over. So, and the same same thing with uh, with every part of the engine, including if not especially the block. Well, you were tutored and, and, and somewhat mentored, I would say, by, by Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's, he's right in every respect of what he said. Yes. Uh, and you seem to cling to that policy. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, so I, I think that will carry the merit to the durability of your engine. I know you're confident in where you're going with this, but you're also humble enough to have that question mark still in the background. Well, you, you have to uh, question everything, for sure. I think no matter how good you think it is or you are, you still got to try to make everything better, and so that I think that in the end, that's that's the strong point because uh, in racing, if you sit still, you're you're, you're just you're going to run over. And the whole quest is to make it the best, the best it can be. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's not it's not as good as the one I really wanted to get. I mean, who wants to do that? That's the ultimate goal, and it's got my name on it. So like uh, you know, I don't want to sell something that's not good, not not the best. Well, I want to sort of summarize this by saying that, you know, number one, thank you for this, this opportunity, but I meet a lot of people all over the world, and I play Formula One down to guys race go-karts and so yep. forth. The winners all share your philosophy, and I'm not trying to box anybody in, but i got to tell you, that philosophy is the key to your success. Your commitment, and now it's your name on there. By the way, how did you name the company this time? <laughs> well... I don't know exactly how. I, I'm not even. There. My my brother has a place up in Minnesota called Line Performance, so we just we just put the J in front of it. It just became J Line. So uh, my son made the logo for us, and he's super interested in all this stuff, and uh, just sort of evolved into that. You hit on a key point, and that is father son. What an opportunity! Your son, based on the conversation, is all in. Yeah, I know he is. He doesn't know anything else. He's been raised in the racing environment, right? So he uh, he thinks this is normal, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, it's his normal anyway. So, yeah, he's, he's excited about it. Migrated towards uh, the making of parts. He doesn't want to be an engine guy, but he likes making things, likes machining things. So uh, hopefully that's a good, uh, a good fit for us. Wow, it sounds like a good in-house link. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, you got to do something for a living, right? Yeah, so, I can uh, imagine the dinner table discussions are rather different. <laughs> yeah, probably a little, little unique. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, uh, I want to, number one, thank you for taking time. We interrupted your whole day, but the bottom line, this is your magic. This is where you make things happen. I'm looking forward to seeing the product, and I, I, I want to basically say I understand you're throttling this and release. Yes. You are not anxious to be a volume-based company. You're out a quality-based company. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, for that, I want to thank you for your time.
Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not.